First time in the sawmill, boys. Let's rag him up and knock him down. Look who it is. It's the stone in my shoe. All right, the thing that I want to know is how long can I keep doing the voice for? Will I, will I do the voice for the whole video? Because the thing is with Masters of the Air, which is a spin-off, or it's it's like in the same vein, it's produced by the same people that made Band of Brothers. And uh, Pacific, yeah. Which I have not seen. I've only seen one episode of the Pacific. Yeah, the intros. On <laughs> yeah, I only know the musical intros. Da -na -na -na. Masters of the Air stars Austin Butler, Callum Turner, Barry Keoghan, Shuti Gatwa, and some other and, people. And Doyle, is that his name? The guy uh, plays Crosby. Crosby the Goat. Yeah. What well, was the Goat? We'll talk about that in a minute. It's another Irish guy. Uh, Spielberg's son is in an episode or something. Yeah. Nate Mann, he's in Licorice Pizza. Is I haven't he? seen the film, but that's all I know. I don't, plays remember, Rosenthal. I don't remember him in Licorice Pizza. Yeah, he um, hasn't done that many acting stuff. Mm. So, Darren, introduce the concept of Masters of the Air. Yeah, Masters of the Air is set during World War II, and it follows the bloody 100th, so the 100th company, uh, who flew various bombing uh, missions during World War II. Uh, so, that's basically, it just follows the certain crew members and it shows what happened during the missions and what they were doing during World War II. So overall, Darren, what did you think of Masters of the Air? Uh, I thought it was a pretty solid show, pretty good. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I wouldn't say it's as quite as good as the Pacific or Band of Brothers, but it's still a very, very good show. Uh, I really love the actors. I thought Callum Turner and yeah. Master Butler did great uh, as a lead uh, roles. and. Yeah, I would say overall it's been, it's, I'd say it was a very enjoyable uh, experience for me. I thought it started off uh, very strong. Mm. I think it maybe fell off around episode 7 and 8, but I think the finale was pretty good. Overall, I think Masters of the Air is fine. Like, it's good. I think narratively it falls apart after, like, episode 4, 5. Which is the one where, like, all of a sudden they're all separated and yeah. they're in, like, the concentration camps and then, like, the Nazis are chasing after some of the pilots. Yeah. yeah, when they end up in the prison of war camps, uh, it kind of, you know, I don't know, that's the thing where the show turns, uh, you know, dramatically. It, it stagnates. It's a big, it's quite a big shift, but they are following, I mean, most of the stuff is based on what happened in real life. There obviously are some differences, but yeah. it's the names bloody Buck and Bucky. Buck yeah. and Bucky. Okay. Oh, Egan and Clevin, yeah. They yeah. ended up uh, They ended up in a prison of war camp, uh, and they actually met each other mm -hmm. within like the space of three days. Overall, with Masters of the Air, I really love the cast. The cinematography is good for the most part. It's a bit too much green screen. I will say, for a show all about planes and aerial combat, Personally, I didn't love the aerial combat for the most part. Like, there are some episodes which are really good. Episode 3, where uh, Austin episode Butler... Episode 3, uh, yeah, episode yeah. 3 is one of the best. Yeah, it's it's the best show. aerial combat. Then, other than that, I thought the plane stuff was kind of boring. Which is weird, because it's a show all about yeah, planes. I get your point, but it's also following bombing. Squadron, yeah. So, you're not going to get as much aerial combat as you would if, if it was like, uh, you know, fighter pilots, for example. Yeah, true. So if it's something based on that, for example, like Red Tails, mm -hmm. or like, you know, the Tusker GM, and yeah, yeah. that episode, you know, you could see like, where it was like being sort of in a fire pilot plane, but again, I thought that episode was a bit mm. weak. Overall though, I do think the heart and soul of the show is Austin Butler and Callum Turner. I mean, of course I'm going to say Austin yeah. Butler, because like, but the I chemistry, love Austin Butler. The chemistry between the two is really good. They're like, really good. Um, I just think it's funny too how like, Gail, that's the thing too, I remember watching the show and I was like, wait, what's Austin Butler's name? Because they call him Buck, and that's his nickname. <laughs> But then also Callum Turner's nickname is Bucky. And I was like, wait, hold on, hold on. I was mainly mixing up the Buck and Bucky. Yeah. I don't know who was Buck and Bucky. Or... I just thought uh, Austin Butler's character's name was Buck. And then all of a sudden I was re-watching it and, it and his name was Gail. He said, oh, but the name Gail Clevin. I was like, wait, hold on, wait, his name's Gail. I thought it was Buck the whole time. Episodes three and six were the strongest of the show. I'd agree. Uh, the I... pilot I have a soft spot for just because it's where he says the line. First time in the sawmill, boys. Let's rack him up and knock him down. Let's rack him up and knock him down. First time the song was, yeah. That's something. There's like a line in the first, each three, first three episodes, he's a good line. He does, he does. That's the thing with Austin Butler that I like too, is that this is his role post Elvis. This is his first role after Elvis. And the thing when watching this show was that there are times where he sounds like Elvis and there's, there were times where he just didn't at all. Because yeah. I remember too, I was on Twitter and everyone was like, oh my God, the Elvisism's still there. And I'm like, are they though? I don't think so. I think that's just like the funniest thing when people talk about Austin Butler. Yeah. It's like, is he still doing the Elvis voice? He isn't. I think it's just natural, you know? Yeah. It's, it's 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't understand all the critique on that. Yeah, I think definitely. That's a bit too much. It's not even like he's bad either. They're just like, oh, Austin Butler's still doing the Elvis voice, and it's like, and he's still delivering good performances. Yeah. Overall, what do you say? Like your favorite scenes on the show? Because for me, it would be uh, so when uh, uh, Buck and Bucky they reunite the prison of war camp yeah that was, really, that was really, really good well to see because i remember too i remember i was, was messaging so you yeah i remember i was messaging you and i was like wait is austin butler just like not in the show anymore and yeah. you're just like we're just wait and see and then literally the episode i was watching at the end it's when buck walks into the prison of war camp and then like there he is i liked uh, also clevin when he lands the plane uh in algeria yeah that's what really, that was really yeah, good yeah. uh and also callum turner when he's uh, in the last episode, when he puts the American flag. Yeah, up that the... was a great scene. Yeah. I love that scene. My Captain um, America. Yeah, <laughs> he's British though. I, I think Callum Turner's a great actor. I think he's going to do even more. Good oh, things. I I've really liked yeah. him since uh, Fantastic Beasts. That's when I first saw him. I was like, I really like this guy. I hope he does more things. One last scene I forgot is also like, I think it's one of the ends. I think then ends episode six when Rosenthal is getting ready to get back into the plane. Hmm. Yeah, 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 that's a good scene. That's a good yeah. scene. Episode one, when we first meet Buck and Bucky, I really like that stuff with with Buck and the girls and stuff. It's really fun, uh, and the whole explanation of the nickname and where it comes from. Of course, I'm gonna say first time in the sawmill, yeah. boys. Let's rag him up and knock him down. I also like Barry Cohen's death. Oh wait. Speaking of Barry Cohen, his most iconic line is when he's just like, these Nazi forks. Barry Cohen, right, is a very good actor, but also his accent work. I would just say this as like a critique of his work is not great. You can hear his Irishism so much, like um, Saltburn. I, was, I watched that. I don't want to watch that. His accent is just, no. B Barry can't do an accent. I think it's entertaining though, the fact that he can't do an accent. But at the same time, when he's like this high caliber of an actor where people want to work with him like all the time, he just can't do an accent. Episode three, when Austin Butler and his co-pilots are in that like massacre thing and then like they were like, ah, everyone's dying in the back. And then the guy's like, oh, we got a bail. And he's just like, no, we're going to sit yeah, here and take, take it. it. Yeah, kind of solidified uh, Cleven as one of the like great characters. Yeah, one of the great characters. It's just his will and determination. Yeah. There's also the scene in episode two where they're riding the bicycles. I really love that scene. It's just like, you feel like you're one of the boys in the army barracks. Like, you get to like, know and, and be How with them. I forget, like, when uh, Clevin's dancing with a dog. Oh, yeah. It's so good. That's great. That was great. I also like, as you said, the scene where Callum Turner puts the flag up in the last yeah. episode. Crosby, as a character, I really liked up until he cheated on his wife. And I was like, no... Don't cheat on, on your wife with yeah. Daisy from MI High. Don't do that. I really liked, yeah, in episode six when they first met, nothing dodgy happened between them. Yeah. It was really like the... It was a nice platonic yeah. fr friendship. And it's... then he cheated on his wife. And I was like, I Crosby, no. Happened in real life or not? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Probably <laughs> how they were. What do you say then, like, the biggest flaws of the show then? Biggest flaws of the show was the aerial combat wasn't very interesting. Um, narratively it didn't flow nicely. Like, the first episode is kind of just like, all right, here's everything that's going on. Episode two is like, okay, we're just going to, like, fly and, like, bomb stuff. Oh, no, we have to, like, stop bombing during the day. But they still continue to bomb during the day. And then also it's like, okay, so Austin Butler is in Algeria, and then Callum Turner goes off, and then all of a sudden he's, in, like, in a prison of war camp, and then Austin Butler's in a prison of war camp, and it's kind of like, okay, we're losing a bit of narrative focus here. And then all of a sudden the show focuses on Crosby, and it's like, what about Austin Butler and Callum Turner? What's going on here? And then there's also the other guy that's like being hunted by the Nazis. And it's like, what what's what's going on? Like narratively, the show's all over the place. Yeah, I mean, I see your point, but also, yeah, the main reason I'll say is I've said it before, is like they have to base it off what happened in real life, so they can't do certain things yeah, as they'd want. I feel like the better way to structure it then, instead of like doing like a serialized thing where we're following the characters episode by episode, I'd rather they do kind of like the George R. R. Martin like storytelling format where it's like, okay, this episode is all about Crosby. Now this episode is all about Callum Turner. Now this episode is all about Austin Butler. To where like you kind of like center the narrative a bit. So you go like, okay, so this isn't going to be like a big sprawling epic serialized thing. It's just going to be, all right, okay, we've met these characters now. Now we're changing up. This episode's all about Cal Calum Turner. This episode's all about Austin Butler. This episode's all about Crosby. For me, floor-wise, I didn't like... Uh, it was like Quinn and Babyface, remember when they were... Yeah. And then it just... It didn't show how they escaped. No, it's not at all. The UK just skipped over that. I didn't really like that. I felt we could have got more of the Tusker GM because I thought that was a bit interesting. Yeah. And then it just... 
you know. Oh, oh speaking of actually, Shooty Gatwa shows up. Does and nothing really. He does nothing, but also it's like they they keep showing him in the intro and like he doesn't show up until like episode seven. Yeah. And even then he doesn't do anything and it's kind of like, okay. So what was well, the, like the yeah promoter does? But also it's a matter of a thing too, where it's like if you want to focus on like the African American, you know, like Emin, and you want to do like a Red Tails thing, why not do that as well? Like, do you know what I mean? It's like you you integrate that a little bit earlier on into the story yeah, would have been and good. and have like a nicer crossover yeah. instead of just to say, okay, cool, now we're following the Red Tails for a bit. Yeah, I do feel like there's some episodes where yeah, like not much. I think it was episode seven. Was was that within the D Day one? Like, it just skipped over. Yes. They're showing yeah, Crosby yeah. how uh, he didn't sleep for three days, like, planning all the, everything yeah, yeah. for the missions. And then we didn't actually... We saw, like, five seconds yeah. of just bombers flying over. That was it. We didn't see yeah. anything of the D-Day, which I thought was a missed opportunity in a way. Yeah, 100%. Like, that's what that's the thing I'll say with the show, and my biggest critique with the aerial combat is that it's not very interesting. Like, for the most part, too, it's like, they're in the planes, and then... Tell me, like, how many episodes it happens in where they're just like, oh, no, this guy's been hit. Oh, God, he's bleeding, he's dying, his face is all over the place. Oh, wait, no, he's still alive. Oh, no, he's dead. Uh, we got to bail. And it's like, it's, it's really repetitive. Like, I don't think the show is terrible. I think it's decent. But for it being, like, prestige television, which, you know, is on the same level as the acclaimed Band of Brothers and Pacific, which I still need to watch. Mm -hmm. But I've seen enough from that stuff to where I can go, yeah, this is, like, high-caliber prestige television. Masters of the Air doesn't live up to that. Like, it's got a great cast. Like, Austin Butler is my boy. He's fantastic. Callum Turner is great. But it's kind of like... Okay, why did we make this? We're not really saying anything. We're just showing something that happened. For me, I, I still enjoyed the show. I I was glad we finally got one because it seems like every 10 years or something. Yeah. The Brand of Brothers came out in 2001. Pacific was 10 years after. Now this... Uh, uh, I'm glad we did get another World War II show from Hanks and mm -hmm. Spielberg. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say it's as good. Uh, as the pre as his predecessors, but uh, yeah, we've got to get into Band of Brothers next, man. Yeah, hundred percent. I do. I that. do need to watch that. I do. So I do. Good. One thing I will say about the show that I did enjoy is the theme song. Like, it's really cool. Yeah. And the the fun thing too is like Blake Neely composed it, and I know Blake Neely because he composed the Flash theme, and he also composed Arrow. So to see him like go and work at Masters of the Air and create this like iconic like military theme, it's pretty cool. I also just like enjoyed watching the intro, yeah. and it just be like. <laughs> No, wait, no. That's Pacific. That's Pacific. Um, <laughs> burr, 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 burr. You, you, that, yeah. yeah, that's that's yeah, the thing. It was also very long. It was same as the other shows, like the intro is just. Yeah. I mean, if if you don't want to see spoilers, <laughs> if you don't want to see spoilers, then the intro is not. Oh yeah, the, the intro is spoiling you, like you can work out stuff, which like. What's happened yet? What's not happened yet? What's going to happen if you just watch the intro? Which is why I think it's so funny how Shooty Get wasn't like every episode, like every intro episode, and he shows up in episode seven, and just like, all right, I'm Shooty Get one. And it's like, okay. I still think, you know, I mean, all the intros are really good, actually. But, they are, they uh, are. Pacific, it's different, to be honest. It does. I, I think so, too. I really like the Masters of the Air theme, though. Yeah. Overall, yeah. Solid. It was good. I forgot why I rated it on Letterboxd. I think I yeah, gave it like 3.5, I think. Well, three, you gave three, I gave it three. I gave it three. Yeah, like it wasn't awful. I enjoyed watching it. The performances are good. I can't fault any of the acting. It's just narratively, it's a bit all over the place. I, I I can agree with the narrative. So yeah, cool. All right then, boys, we're going back to the voice. That was our review for Masters Master. Wait, hold. I messed up the voice. The voice is back. Okay, guys, that was our review for Masters of the Air. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on social media. All that good stuff is down in the description. And yeah, until we meet again, I'll see you guys next time. Let's rank them up and knock them down. down.